Okay, we're going to be talking about expanding binomial expressions. And when you're working with expanding binomial expressions, commonly this is taught using what's called the FOIL method. And what the FOIL method is, is it stands for first, outside, inside, last. And what they mean by that is when you're expanding out this binomial, it's going to be the first term times the first term, first term times the outside term. Then you move on to your second term, and it's going to be second term times the inside, and the second term times the outside. And that's kind of where the FOIL method is coming from here. Um, it's used quite a lot, so let's take a look here. I'll write this off to the side first, so you guys can see here, we're going to do a first term. So it's going to be 3x times 2x. Coefficients come together, and x times x is x squared. Again, if you need help with exponents, uh, I'll, I'll link a video in the top right. You can check it out. Uh, next, you're going to have 3x times negative 1, in which case that's minus 3x. And then you're going to have 1 times 2x, which is 2x. And lastly, 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. So you notice if you follow this along here, it's going to be 3x times 2x, then 3x times negative 1. Notice you're always grabbing the sign in front, and then you have 1 times 2x and 1 times negative 1. Once you've done that, you're looking to collect like terms here. So you notice here the negative 3x and 2x are considered to be like terms. So this becomes 6x squared minus x minus 1. And this would be the FOIL method. All right, let's look at another example here. So if I want to solve this using FOIL, we're going to go ahead and distribute the 5x to the first term, outside term, inside term, last. So now when we go to answer this, you're going to have here um, 5t times 3. So if you notice, you have your 5t times 3. That's going to be 15t. Then we have 5t times 2t. 5 times 2 is 10. t times t is t squared. Uh, then you go to the inside term, becomes negative 3. And then negative 1 times 2t is negative 2t. And then again, you're looking for like terms here. I see a 15t and a minus 2t. Those will come together. Uh, typically, you write this in order by degree. So I'll put 10t squared plus 13t minus 3. Okay, let's take a look at example 3 here. So with example 3, it's a little there's a little bit of an addition here where you have this constant term in front. Typically, what you do when you're handling something like this is put that constant term out in front and ignore it. Take care of the inside first. Take care of your multiplication. Save this uh, for the very end. So in this case here, we're going to go ahead and do our distribution. And when I do that, I get t squared minus 7t plus 2t minus 14. And again, don't distribute now. Save that again to the end. Uh, the reason for that is if you were to distribute now, you'd have to distribute to one, two, three, four terms. But I have two like terms here, which I can simplify. And by doing that and simplifying those two like terms, you reduced your calculation. So this will give me negative 2. And again, these are like terms here. So this would be t squared minus 5t minus 14. Now I've simplified fully in the brackets. Now I distribute my 2. In which case here, when we distribute the 2, that's going to go to all three terms now of this. And when I distribute that, we end up getting minus 2t squared plus 10t. Notice the two minus signs, plus 28. And now it's fully simplified. All right, let's take a look at example 3. So with example 3 here, this is short form notation. If you remember from your exponent rules, if someone writes x squared, that's intended to be x times x. So if you have 3h minus 1 squared, there's nothing special about the base of x, right? The base in this case is 3h minus 1, so this will just be 3h minus 1 times 3h minus 1. Now if you want, you can write this out and go ahead and expand this out the long way uh, using FOIL, but that's not what I'm going to do here. So what you do here is instead of rewriting this as 3h minus 1 times 3h minus 1, keep it in its short form notation, and then go ahead and do the following operation. So anytime you have a binomial to the power of 2, you go ahead and do this, you'll always get the right answer. What you do is you square the first term, or square the first, first times second times 2, and square the last. So let's see how that would work here. So if I'm looking here at my equation, 
it says square the first. Well, if I square the first, the first is 3h. If I square that, I'm going to get 9h squared. Okay, so we have my first term is 9h squared. Now, if I take the first, if you read here, we have the first times the second times 2. Okay, well, the first is going to be 3h times the second is negative 1 times 2. So if I multiply that out, we get negative 6h. And then lastly, if you square the last term, negative 1 squared, you get 1. Now, I mean, you might be thinking, well, I could have just done it quicker going this way. But in general, you don't have to write all this out. And in general, you don't have to do all of this. All of this and all of this can be done in your head. Uh, as you do more of the questions, it becomes very quick. You can expand this out in a fifth of the time that it would normally take to do this the long way. Okay, so keep this in mind here. Given any binomial, you square the first, first times second times two, and square the last. Okay, let's try it again with this one. Again, we can still write it off to the side. So if I'm going to square the first, it's going to end up being 4k squared. So 4k squared. Now I'm going to do first times the second times two. Well, that's just going to be 4k. And then I'm going to square the last term which is 1. That's it. Square the first, first times second times 2, square the last, and we're done. And again, you could have gotten this answer the long way, and again, to do that, though, you'd have to write 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. Then you'd have to go ahead and do the distribution of all these terms. And when you do do that, you'll find out you actually do get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Let's try this next one. Same idea here, you're going to hold off on this minus 3. So we're going to go ahead and put that down, and then we're going to expand this binomial out. And again, it has that statement, so we're going to square the first. So in this case, square the first, it's 1, you know, 1 squared. First times second times 2 is negative 4x. And lastly, we're going to square the last term, which gives me 4x squared. Now again, you don't have to be writing this all down. As you do more and more of these, you won't need to. So I have one minus four x plus four x squared. Now I can go ahead and distribute the minus three into the brackets. And in which case we get minus three plus 12 x minus 12 x squared. All right, let's look at, look at example seven. So example seven here is really getting to understand that this is its own little problem and this is its own little problem and you would handle these separately as you work through the math and then you would add them together at the end. So let's go ahead and answer this one here. So again, like we talked about, this minus three off to the side, I'm going to square the first term. First times second is going to be negative six x times two is going to be negative 12 x and square the last to get positive nine. In addition here, we're going to square the first term. First times second times 2 gives me positive 4x. Square the last, you get 4. Now that I've done that, you look inside the brackets for any simplification. We don't have that, so I can just go ahead and distribute here. So this 3 is going to be distributed into the trinomial. Likewise, the 4 will be distributed into the trinomial. And what do we end up getting here? Well, I end up getting minus 12x squared plus 36x minus 27 plus 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. So now we're in a situation where we can go ahead and collect like terms. I see a minus 12x squared here and a positive 4x squared here. So I can simplify those. Uh, this will simplify to become minus 8x squared. Uh, likewise, I'm seeing here I have a positive 36x and a positive 16x, those can come together. Here, a positive 52x, and then I also have a minus 27 and a positive 16. And if I put that together here, we're going to get here a minus 11. Okay, let's take a look at example eight. So right away, you'll notice in example eight, this is to the power of four, right? So we haven't been working with that yet, right? The Example where we're talking about square the first, first times second times two, square the last. That deals with powers of two. Well, what we can do here is I can rewrite this as a power of two times a power of two. 
And again, using your exponent rules, you know that multiplying with the same base, you add the exponents, 2 plus 2 is 4. So these are equivalent. So what I can do here is actually sort of treat these as two separate problems and then multiply the results out. So in this case here, I'm going to square the first. First times second times 2, square the last. Obviously, this one's going to be the same. And then I can go ahead and expand this out. Now, this term, this isn't expanding out binomials anymore. I'm expanding out binomial means 2, which is only two terms, obviously. This here is a, you're multiplying out trinomials. So now you'll notice what we have here is my first term is multiplied by each of the three. My second term is multiplied by each of the three. And lastly, my third term is going to be multiplied by each of the three here. So this third term is going to be multiplied by x, 2x, and the 1. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and fill this all out here. So I'm multiplying my first, my first term x squared. I'm going to multiply each of these three. So this is going to be x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared. And then I'm going to be taking my minus 2x. This is going to be multiplied by each of the three. So minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x. And lastly, I'm going to be multiplying a 1. So when you multiply by 1, that doesn't do anything. Uh, leaves it completely unchanged. And now we're done. So now I want to go ahead and collect like terms here. So I have no x to the power of 4s. So I'm just going to write that back down. Moving on to x to the power of 3, I have an x to the power of 3 here, x to the power of 3 here, and that is it. That comes together to become minus 4x cubed, an x squared here, x squared here, x squared here. Putting that together, we end up getting a 6x squared, and lastly here, a minus 2x and a minus 2x become minus 4x, and that constant term is all by itself. And so you just put that plus 1 back down. Okay, that concludes uh, expanding binomials here. Um, again, just we just touched on it briefly, but this will give you enough um, technique to be able to tackle many more questions uh, relating to these ideas here. Pay special attention to the th this um, example four, where we initially showed you the square the first, first times second times two, square the last. It's a great way to expand out bin binomials efficiently and quickly. And the more of these you do, the faster you will get at them. Thank you.